Hi y'all, Morgan from Madeira USA here. We're joined by Nancy Minnie, our lovely in-house embroiderer at Madeira USA headquarters. Today, she is going to cover some information about our fire resistant line featuring backing, bobbins, and our firefighter embroidery thread. They've all been specifically developed for use in industries where safety standards are set. So chime in today to let us know if you've used our fire resistant products before. If you have any embroidery that you've done within the mentioned industries, or if you have any questions, we'll do our best to answer. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Nancy, why don't you take it away? Hi, everybody. Thank you, Morgan. And thank you for joining us. If you are watching us live, um, chime in with where you're coming from or where you're watching from, I should say, or get your questions in. We'll answer them live here, or we will go back and do those um, later on as well. So Firefighter is our fire resistant or flame resistant thread. Comes in 24 different colors. And this is for when safety is a concern. So whether it's a firefighter, a race car driver, or maybe you're a utilities worker or you're embroidering for the utilities workers that are, um, you know, electricity, when the sparks come off, they have to make sure that they're not going to catch on fire. So just like those garments and all the um, equipment that they wear, if you want to embroider on it, you want to make sure that you're matching that same safety quality. And the flame resistant firefighter thread is going to do that. Perfect. So we'll talk about that a little bit. So we're going to get delve right into the thread after I talk about the backings and bobbins. So not only do you want to use thread, that's flame resistant. You also want to use your bobbins and your backing that are flame resistant. So you don't want to be adding anything to that garment that's going to compromise the safety. Um, so your backing that we have is, um, we carry it here and it's called Easy Flame Resistant Weblon Mesh. And it's available in pre-cuts, the 8x8s. And it's available in the larger roll that is 24 inches by 25 yards. And this is going to be the backing that you're going to want to use as well. This is also good for your children's wear or infants wear as well for that same reason. Uh, needles, we'll talk about needles as well. Um, I'm actually, um, so they're 80 12s and I want to explain that why you want to use that size when we go over to the threads. So we'll talk a little bit more about those. But when it comes to bobbin thread, the bobbin thread is also flame resistant. So they're aramid fibers that are made by DuPont and they are flame resistant. Um, so you could buy the cone, wind your own, or you can buy the pre-wound bobbins Perfect. that are in the L. And not only do we have the 10 pack there, we have the 144 box <laughs> here. Um, so if you're doing a lot and you need that full gross, we have that available for you. And if you're just doing a little bit here or there and you just need the 10 that's going to hold you for a while, then we Perfect. have those How 10. convenient. It's very convenient. Um, so don't forget your backing and your bobbins to make sure that those are flame resistant as well. Um, so the thread itself is OCO Tech certified. So that means it is um, certified to be free of any harmful substances. So if you need that for your standards when you're doing the embroidery itself, we have that available for you. And um, that's a great thing to be OCO Tech certified. Perfect. So whenever it comes to any thread, um, I do try to pull this little chart in here because this shows the back side of a satin stitch where you want to see one third of the bobbin thread showing right down the middle, nice and clean, and one third of the top thread. And this is on the reverse side of a satin stitch. If you're seeing too much bobbin thread, that means your top, head, uh, top is too tight. You want to loosen it. If you're not seeing hardly any of the bobbin thread, it means your top tension is too loose and you want to tighten it up a little bit. And this is all in relationship to the bobbin tension um, in that metal bobbin case. Um, so I always like to throw that out there because as soon as you start going to another thread besides poly neon or the classic rayon 40 weight thread, you do got to start playing with your tensions and you want to make sure um, that they're set correctly and then it's going to run like a dream. That's what we want, right? We do. <laughs> we always want that. 
Um, so just like with any of the other threads, we have the stitch density guide. It gives you the um, satin stitches per centimeter, the stitch density for the multiple different kinds of softwares that are out there. So if we go down here, we're gonna find Firefighter right there on the bottom. So it gives you the satin stitches per centimeter recommendation. It gives you the um, density, stitch density, depending on which software you have. And then it also recommends that needle. So yes, it says 7511, but 8012 is probably the better choice when it comes to this thread. And I'm gonna explain why. So just have a couple of stitch outs. So the one thing that I do not have here is I don't have a firefighter's jacket. I don't have a firefighter t-shirt. I don't have really anything that's flame resistant as far as a garment. So what I did do is I tried to use as many different fabrics as I could. I'm going right up to this really heavy duty canvas, the denim, and even a faux suede um, like polyester that sometimes can can give you a little bit of issue there. Perfect. Um, the object of all the designs that I've embroidered here is to show you that it is a 40 weight, it fills in very nicely, and it stitches very well. Um, so that in and of itself is important. Um, you want to have a good, not only do you want it to be um, flame resistant, you also want it to be um, easy to run, and it certainly is. Um, so these are all, this one's not a stock design, but it was designed for 40 weight thread for the firefighter. This guy, this little um, Dalmatian guy is a stock design. And the flaming card here is also a stock design. I didn't, I stitched this guy out the other day and um, I didn't have any thread breaks. Um, I did slow it down a little bit. I was only stitching it out at about 750 stitches a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, that's still not really that slow. Um, actually, I take that back. I started at 800 and the yellow was stitching first and it frayed. So I turned it down 50 stitches a minute slower and I didn't have another thread break through the whole design. And that's, I think it's about 28,000 stitches on there um, for that guy. So stitch out really well. So let's talk um, Morgan, I think, panned around and, you know, you could see all the different colors that we have here. Um, you may have also noticed that we have, you know, the large cone, the small spools yeah. in all 24 colors. Those are available. So just like with your bobbin threads, if you're doing a lot of embroidery with this, your large cones are going to give you what you need. Um, if you just have small product um, projects here or there, then obviously your smaller spools are going to do the trick. And they're kind of displayed out, you know, they, there's so many different colors, you know, with those 24, they really did a great job in giving you a great variety, whether it's your warm colors, your cool colors, your pastels, and then of course, all of your, um, your neutrals that you might need. Um, so there are quite a bit of colors to work from. Um, I did want to, if you can kind of get a good glimpse of this guy up here, that design right there was digitized by... Uh, Lee Caricelli Barnes at um, Threadworks. Balboa Threadworks. Balboa Threadworks. Yeah. Thread, thank you. Um, so Balboa Threadworks. She did a really awesome job um, digitizing that, the detail that she gets um, in her designs. And then again, it was stitched out with the yeah, firefighter that's thread. That's one of my favorites. We had it kicking around. Yep. Um, and it's to show um, perfect, you know, again with that. So let's talk about why we want to use an 8012. So why not a 7511? You can use a 7511. Um, and if that's what you normally have around, go ahead and give it a try. But if you are finding that it's um, fraying and breaking a little more, the first thing you want to do is go up to an 8012. And the reason why, and I'm going to pick a color that I think we'll be able to see on the black, is because so there's aramid fibers that are made by DuPont on these, but it's not a filament thread. It's what's called a spun thread. So are you able to pick up a little fuzziness so. there? I can see it on the cone. So I yep. want to just make sure that on the MSC, we can see that it is a little bit fuzzy. So if something is spun, that means it's little tiny fibers that are spun together, much like you would do with wool. Um, on a spinning wheel. You're taking all those little fibers and you're spinning them around each other to create that spun um, 
thread. So because it's spun, it's a little fatter. So even though it's only its weight comes in um, and qualifies for a 40 weight thread, it is a little bit thicker. It gives a real nice fill for sure, um, but it just needs a little bit wider of a needle um, hole. So going from your 7511 up to your 80, will um, you'll see big results if you're having those issues um, with the thread breaking. Um, so we got our firefighter backing. I'm in our flame resistant backing, our flame resistant bobbins that goes along with our flame resistant thread. And if you're, um, if a job comes into your shop and call, calls for this type of a product, um, we have it here at Madeira USA and, um, you can be assured that it's going to run great. Hmm. Um, do we have any questions, Morgan? We do. We actually have a unique request from Jeff. Can we see the FR products in action? And that is a fun idea for us to do. <laughs> we'll have to do it outside. Um, so actually, so we do, there is a video out there and we'll see if we can get a link to that. So that's actually a great question, Jeff. I appreciate that you wrote that in there because sometimes what a customer will do is they'll get the thread and they'll say, well, I really want to see if this is flame resistant. So they try to light it on fire. And when it lights on fire, they're like, whoa, what's going on here? It wasn't supposed to catch on fire. So here's the deal when it comes to that. And like I said, we have a video of this somewhere. We'll see if we can find that and share it with you. Um, all embroidery thread is made with a lubricant and that lubricant is necessary for the high speed machines so that the thread will run nice and smoothly through all the transition from cone to needle um, in the machine. As soon as you embroider with this, um, so if I took this and tried to light it, it will light on fire. If I tried to light this on fire, same color, same thread, this will not. So what happens during the embroidery process is that lubrication goes away, it's worn off, and then it's perfectly fine. Ah, what a fun fact. That is a fun fact. <laughs> and thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate Perfect. that. All right, Nancy, this is great insight to working with Madeira's fire resistant embroidery products. Those mentioned here are, of course, available at MadeiraUSA.com, or if you'd like to call in to 800-225-3001 to add them to your order, you're free to do that as well. That is all for now. Thanks so much for watching. Your time and attention is important to us. Be sure to check back in the next couple of weeks for more videos on embroidery products, tips, tricks, and techniques. We are Madeira USA, and we will see you next time.